introduction about who we are. Nova Gizzi is the new Italian Infant Study Group, and it is an affiliated of the American Academy of Infant Prostodontics. I'm a part of the board, and is one of the five founders of the Implant Multimodal Infant Dentistry Coordination that we have been founded together with the Association Aras, Enrico Moglioni is president, and another association, the Italian Association. During a walk some years ago in Venice with Leonard Lincoln, he told me what a good idea you had with this multimodality, but he forgot that in 1990 he had been publishing a book entitled, entitled The Infant Dentistry Today, a multidisciplinary approach. So, I'm just one of the numerous developers of this concept, which is the product of the air that we have been breathing, but more than we, our fathers, have been breathing during the annual meetings of the uh, Italian Implant Study Group, which was held by Giordano Muratori, this guy, since the early 60s till the late 90s, and to which Many great colleagues participated. You can see Pasqualini, Mondani, my father as well. He followed Pasqualini and began doing certain implants in 1970. Tramonte was there, bringing his screw, which was a titanium screw copied from a wood screw, because he thought that bone was like wood. Oh, was like wood. And he wrote a book in 1964 in which he wrote about his experience with 422 implants inserted and immediately loaded, 1964. This is a Tramonte implant that he inserted in 2003, immediate loading. Soft tissues result, four years, nine years. You can see that the neck is thin. It's what today it is called platform switch. This is 64 screw. By cortical is here. Giordano Muratori had his own screw. Look at this screw, how it is done, the neck and the plate. This is 1966. Garbaccio was there with his bicortical screw built to reach the deep cortical, patented in 1972. These are documents. And this is a drawing of Garbaccio. Look at this drawing and figure out how many drawings like this we see now in the publicity. New techniques. This is Carpaccio way of dealing with the anterior mandible and the maxilla. This is a Russian, they, they told me it's Russian saying, Mike Shulian said always, everything new is of that well forgotten past. And this is true. Because when you say platform switching, you say I think the word quickly before. Osseo integration is the way the bone, the bone doesn't know the names in which this thing is named, but that was before. Pasqualini was at the GZ, teaching everybody how to rule forces after implant insertion, forces from the tongue, as Moglioni said. I've been deepening this topic. <coughs> and forces on the provisional prosthesis immediately inserted. This is a book he wrote about that. Mondana, bringing his own uh, intraoral welding machine, with whom he wanted to weld together the titanium needle implants, tantalum implants from Shalom converted in titanium, and to weld, because Titanium was very well. <clears throat> this is one of the first videos 
from Mondano, 1973. We were born in this land, and we have all the videos of the documents. And you see, at that time, the first experimentation with the machine. Son of Mondani is a friend of ours. This is just a picture of a case of mine. We showed that Mugioni showed that. And foreign colleagues were there. The, the legend of infant dentistry from America was who is Lena Linka bringing his place at the Congress. And uh, during the midwinter meeting of 1973, Leonard Lincoln performed four clinical cases in front of the auditorium. This is 1973. You can download from the internet. Four interventions with immediate load, 1973. This is a provisional prosthesis at the end of intervention. All the auditorium, like we are, was there operating the patients. And he is a very good friend of our school. And a great guy. This is my father, 1973, speaking about the implants in Milan with Hugo Pasquale, another legend of implant dentist. Then Brandemar came with this titanium screw copied from an iron screw for housing constructions. I don't see this geniality in these two shapes. They are very similar. <coughs> the principle were that you must wait for at least six months. Here there is written one month. One, month, one year is revision, that you must stay away from the corticals, that you cannot kneel the abutment, the older one remember all these things. But anyway, these implants are useful, you will see in our problems. Although a new family of problems was born with these implants. Form family of problems tied to excessive thickness to strength of the connection and to biocompatibility of the connection because of the connection does not allow interproximal whole peak survival. Micro gap and micro micro gap problems which are still unresolved. But anyway, together with the other implants, they get good results. Just imagine the implant. This is a blade implant. This is a one piece implant. Together they can work very well. Because if correctly ruled, the different connection is about the same results. Also, this case is submerged and imagined implants together. So when Mugnoni said something about that, when are submerged implants essential? We could answer in areas in which bone is not providing adequate immediate stability. For example, in the posterior superior, in the tuberosity, if you put a one piece implant, imagine in mouth, the tongue you can push it and we have a failure. As you will see in our protocols, are based our protocols on the posterior pillars. Without uh, these posterior pillars, we cannot recover mouth physiology. <clears throat> our goal today, anyway, is not to upset your habits, telling you that all these implant shapes are necessary. But just to let you know that if, if a case like this and a case like this 
I've been treated one with all the same implant and the other one with different types of implants. This has been done just because it was indicated by anatomy and protocols and not from facial. <clears throat> so maybe a lot of you have seen just some types of implants. Our goal is to let you know that many other types of implants exist and that they can work together. There is a part of the world that you didn't see and that we are glad to share with you for the few things that you know in this specific sort. All implant companies today build and sell implants that they call thin. Because everybody understood that first choice is to respect anatomy and second choice is to modify anatomy which is useful, but it is most risky. <clears throat> when we deal with, for example, an anterior area that you can see here treated by means of an immediate loading of a garbage screw, when you deal with this kind of area, 3.2 millimeters are too much because an inferior incisor is 4.5 millimeters wide. 5 millimeters, 5.5. If we put an implant like this, we don't let the interproximal bone peak survive and we cannot build a proper prosthesis. It's impossible. So in these cases, we must choose a one-piece implant because a two-piece implant, a submerged implant, cannot be thinner than 3.2, we saw that. And the, the thickness important is here, it is not here, but because it is here that bone must survive and soft tissues must recover properly. And so, this is the proper input for us, so we can build a proper graph. Example with three one-piece screws immediately loaded, and you can see how are the tissues between them. These are proper spaces, you can build a correct prosthesis, and this is after 12 years. If a particular function strong function is needed, for example, canine guidance, you can add a needle implant, implant and weld to the screw. This is a Pasqualini, Marco Pasqualini case, performed 1987, this is 28 years control. Because he needed to have a canine guidance to save these teeth, you see the other teeth because they were involved in right lateral function. And so this implant has saved the other teeth. This is one of the functions of the implants. I will just to say implants is long lasting because we put a brown short. And these are needles. We will speak about that in the posterior sector because they are particular applications. Histology around needles, which is the same as around any other implant, because it is titanium. <clears throat> if we have a ridge like this, very thin, what can we do? We build a bridge on these two teeth? I don't think so. We fracture the ridge? This is not predictable. So the best thing is to use an implant which respects this anatomy. You insert the implant here inside, you got to learn, of course. 
implant descending in the bone distracts the trabeculus. This is the breastfeed. <clears throat> so you can see soft tissues out outcome. And you can see how the bone has been distracted. This is four years later. I repeat it. And patient has his one tooth implant. This is a one tooth implant. Pasqualini, Hugo Pasqualini, the guy we saw before, after 36 years. 36. Patient now is 44 years. He's continuing to go to Marco Pasqualini office. This is 72 when it was inserted. This is 36 years. And it is the oldest implant in the world documented. You can find it in this book. This book is in the Batman Medline, the first book in the Batman Medline, as said. Histology around the blades. We heard a lot of things, fibro, osseous integration. This is histology around the blades. Same as around any other titanium implant. This is pink out histologies. So, we understood that we can build prosthesis on different types of implants. That can be one piece like these two implants, submerged implants, submerged one piece implant, submerged implants here where the bone is dense, needle implants here where it's not dense, it's deformed. One piece submerged all together. I've been publishing a study over 7,000 implants wanted to download it from the internet and with different shapes there's not so much difference about success rate. So it's better to let us let those implants work together. This is the interest of the patient. This could be how we conceive implant dentistry in a drawing, and this could be to begin. We don't mean that we have to learn a lot of things, but if somebody wants to approach this way, you can buy some plates, some screws, one of these screws, and some larger screws, which are important to the mother machine, to begin. So main question are, how deep, how thick, how dense is the ridge, how is the antagonist, how is occlusion? Which are types of loads? There are many other questions. But let's begin from some questions. About the relationship between the jaws, we use the Fanali Implant Prognostic Index, which puts in relation distance between the jaws, implant axis, and distance, horizontal distance between supporting clusters. You get an index, and this is index is low. You can decide if you have to weld, if you have not to weld, if you have to remove the welded bar after post integration. Many things. About rich depth, and this is the inferior, our fence is this one. Normal, reabsorbed, or hypotrophic ridges. I speak about hypotrophic ridges because when we say, everybody says atrophic, atrophic means nothing. Atrophic, it's Greek. No, no bone. So where, it, where there is no bone, for us it's common sense to a patient who is carrying since 20, 30 years mobile prosthesis to be like this. To insert two screws in the chain and to build an overtension. I have a lot of cases. This works very well. A patient is very happy because he's passing from a very mobile prosthesis to a less mobile prosthesis. Fur prosthesis. This works. And I thank Pura, the one who invented the system. This is the patent. Is an English English. So let's get back 
a normal religious hypertrophy is our we can move from this to, to, to this. But there is a lot of variability. There are patients who come without teeth, that maybe we saw, we see just in Sweden, because in Italy it's very difficult to see patients like this in the office. But anyway, they exist. Patients who come with teeth, with bridges on one side, the other side is moving, and one side is not moving. There is inflammation, there is no inflammation. There is dense bone in one side, and adiacent there is uh, no dense bone. There are products like this, very different situations are simple. So I cannot speak about everything. So today they told me to speak about something. I will speak about this protocol for the superior jaw, blades, and this type of uh, uh, technique to insert the blades in a trophic situation and needles in the atrophic muscle. So let's now begin for the first course, which is origa technique. Origa is a technique for cases like this, in which or teeth or a fixed prosthesis on teeth is moving, it's going to be, it is irrecoverable. So the destiny is to extract all the teeth, but if we extract the teeth, the situation of failing is like this, and patient goes unavoidable to mobile prosthesis. So we can do something better passing from the first prosthesis he had before, or the teeth, moving teeth he had before, to a new fixed prosthesis without ever passing through mobile prosthesis. In fact, the goal of this technique is to provide a full arch maxillary fixed prosthesis capable to maintain oral apparatus physiology, this is the key factor, without ever obliging the patient to pass at any time of therapy through mobile prosthesis. It's a big problem that we attain with this technique. Its pillars are mouth physiology, one stage and two stage implants working together, intraoral welding, and static and dynamic occlusion respect. That's been by mouth physiology. To be quick, I just tell you that a fixed opposition to mandible elevation is necessary to maintain muscle tones and to avoid TMJ pathology. This is a hundred years of studies which confirm what I'm saying. For example, prevalence of TMJ clicking subjects with missing posterior teeth. One of the numerous signs. The Swedish have created a brand on fixed prosthesis with posterior extensions. You create an imbalance that you can mask with teeth, but any time you load a cantilever, you create a stress in the bone. This is physics. It is like a diving, diving board. So they tell you to load the front teeth, forgetting that by this way you create a pathology. Because the lack of contact, of posterior contact, creates TMJ compression and muscle saddles. No posterior teeth, TMJ compression. This is the mechanism, very simple. Or missing teeth, or low teeth, it is the same. <clears throat> so we must revise this concept of success, which is not my implants are long-lasting, but it is, I have been healing this patient from his pathology, his pathology or not. 
and we must provide biomechanically balanced solutions. Everybody studies this thing at school, but everybody forgets. Maybe not that much. Somebody forgets. And we can check with today instruments. We have many advantages because now instruments are capable to tell you, yes, this is physiologic, this is not. Second pillar of the technique we are speaking about, we are introducing, is one stage and two stage implants working together. And this we know since 1962, because Pasqualini published a study on 91 implants in 28 dogs, poor dogs, with submerged and unsubmerged implants, demonstrating that implants communicating with the oral cavity and implants non communicating with the oral cavity got the same tissue response, bone tissue response. So we can build fixed prosthesis on submerged and non submerged implants. One piece and one piece together. Third pillar is intraoral well. We saw that it was invented by Pierluigi Mondani, published for me. Great entries from that, this guy. Everybody at the GT, at the Italian study group we saw before, understood that you could well not only needle implants but any titanium implants. And so a new wave of implant dentistry was born there 30 years ago. In 1995, I've been beginning to weld submerged implants. I've been building these abutments. This is 1995, welding them together, and this is after 20 years. The case is still in my office. This is an article I did in 1998. Time passes, now today everybody is possible. They are used to it. Four pillars of occlusion. Static and dynamic occlusion, which is very important, and now we understand it better because everybody wants to apply immediate load. Without this, you don't do it. Please don't do it without that. You have to know how the system works. So now we have pillars and the principle of the technique, and we speak about the origin. For example, you have a situation of a irrecoverable bridge or roots, teeth are failing. If we remove, we go to mobile prosthesis. So first thing we do is to put two implants in the posterior and we wait for six months. After six months, in one single session, we remove the anterior teeth and we put implants. We weld the anterior implants, the posterior ones, and we load immediately with a provisional prosthesis. <clears throat> More precise explanation. These teeth are lost, so first of all we insert implants, implants one by side. If we do full arch, we can do any arch as well. Full arch, we put implants in the tuber This and wait for six months. After six months, in one single session, you insert the abutments in the, the posterior submerged implants, you remove all the anterior teeth, slowly, slowly remove, you insert immediately post extracted implants. You will you want the anterior implants in the posterior implants. And you load it immediately with a fixed, full arch provisional prosthesis. Clinical case. This patient comes to me with bridging arrangement. So, as you can see, if I remove these teeth, where does she go? Mobile prosthesis, of course. 
So I cement the bridge, it takes a, take an X-ray, and I decide to apply the property. Because if I remove the teeth, the bone is like this situation, and it goes like this. So, first step is to put the two implants in the tuberosities, and there you go in the process if you can, and then we will wait for six months. After six months, one single session, you apply the abutments in the posterior, you remove all these teeth, you insert immediately post extractic implants, you bend, create two titanium implants so you can correct, this is a big intervention, so you cannot be there losing time. You can bend this implant, you correct parallelism correctly, these are the eight new implants, and then you weld the eight new implants with the two previous implants, and this is the provisional prosthesis. And the patient has passed from this situation to this situation and goes with this T O in one single step without any mobile prosthesis between. From this to this. You must weld to the posterior also integrate the implants, the anterior ones, because the implants you put in the front have a very bad root prime ratio and they are inclined in front. Don't try to do it without because you can have more failures. So this is the final prosthesis. This was before and this was after. This is seven years after. This has been published uh, in the States in some other article in a uh, continuing education American magazine. And we've been publishing about 200 implants inserted by these techniques since 2004 with Enrico, as well, John, who's signed the team as well. <coughs> If the premaxilla is very thin, we must not fracture this part. We lose all the strength of this premaxilla. And the bone is like this. There is a few bones. So you use the blades. You insert the blades. You weld the anterior blades to the posterior insulins. And this was four years later, without touching the sinus. <coughs> An old woman. She was glad. Very glad. If there is more bone, we can use chronometric implants as well. For example, in this case, I've been inserting two posterior in the tuberosities. This is the moment in which the abutment were inserted. I've been recovering one screw, this is a one piece screw, from this bridge that was before, and this is the moment of the intervention. So, removing all these teeth, and this is a little bit of the intervention. On the right, in the triangle, there are two one piece implants in the anterior chronometric implants. So, as to correct parallelism using chronometric abutments, which are Right, more proportional to the anterior teeth. This was programmed because there was more situation of more hypothesis. It's better to use things as we saw before. This is programmed to well and remove the well. Patient from Lido of Venice. Do you live in Lido of Venice? The beach. This is end of intervention and 
anterior six new implants have been welded to these implants. This is the patient at the end of the intervention. This is Mike Schulman's friend from the Hotel. <coughs> Provisional prosthesis after 14 days, two weeks about. Then barrel has been removed, and this is the finished bridge. And so this is the new work, this is what the image of the previous work. See a magazine where it's been published, this case. Okay, I've been finished my first session, hope to be the rest of the session. Thank you very much. Let's now speak about the blading plants. <coughs> Which were invented by this legend of the implant dentistry, Leonard Lincoln, who was able to deal with three ridges inserting full arch blades and immediate load, as we saw before. Linkau is the only one in the world having a permanent chair at the New York University. At the New York University since 1991. He's been lecturing at the Harvard University and he is still lecturing today. This is our annual meeting in Trento four years ago. He is now 90 years old, birthday was end of February, and he is still publishing. This is the last article he has been writing with us, with the American Academy of Infant Prostodontics, with our group and Italian Minister of Health, 2016. Just to let you know that blades are alive. Leonard Lenko was followed since the beginning by many colleagues. <coughs> Pasqualini was one of the first. My father followed Pasqualini, Grafana from Germany, Shurov from Russia, Jack Wimmer was the one who uh, built the blades for Lincao with the part dental research and saw the blades. He has an office in front of the Empire State Building. Yanducci, Lobello, but Tramonte as well, Muratori, many other guys followed. This new wave of oral implantology was, which was a very important wave during the 70s. Pasqualini invented a particular stamp, a screwed stamp, so as to let the blade rest after insertion. 1972, and uh, he built a multi-model, multi-shape, multi-shape blade. You could cut the blade so as to get an implant for incisor. It's uh, an implant that is today on the market, same shape, or cut it like this for the posterior. Other implant on the market with the same screw stamp, reinforced the button. This was the Lobello blade with the same screw stamp. They were stamped, sorry. They were different shapes, interesting shapes. So when we face a thin ridge, we can deal with it by means of a conservative technique or with an augmentation technique, which is never conservative because we must fracture the buccal cortex. As we saw before, if we have a correct <coughs> prognostic index index, a correct relationship between the jaws, distance between, between the supporting cusps, and axis of the implant, we can deal with a conservative technique. 
the desk with a blade implant. Let's have a look to blade implants and anatomy. We have a body, a shoulder, an apex, a neck, and an abutment. Everybody knows that. But the important thing is that all the darkened parts must enter the bone. This is very important. Abutment must sit on the slot so as that biologic width surrounds this point, surrounds the basis of the abutment. It does not go here. If the implant is not correctly inserted, failure risk increased, is what these Japanese colleagues said in this article. So, for example, Let's have a look to a ridge, which is wide here, so I can put, for example, some margin implants. But here it is thin. So I deal with it by means of a thin, thin implant, a blade. Gently bending the abutment to correct the axis and inserting the blade in incorrect position. So as these tissues will go here around. And this is soft tissues outcome. You can see the tension of the fibers inside around the abutment. Anterior zone, if we cut here and here, we lose all bone strength. We provide a damage for the patient. So it's better to use a conservative limb which respects this anatomy. I let you see a little video about an intervention I intervention did 13 years ago, just to see how implants enters the region. There's no audio. It's press fit technique. Implant goes inside. And this is position of the implant. If we would have wanted to insert a wider implant, we would have been fracturing this part of the bone. This is more conservative, and this all the force of the bone that this patient needs for protrusive, protrusion, function. The important force is this body. You must not damage it. You can see how the abutment overhangs the ridge, and this is soft tissue outcome. These are the tissues you can see from the impression how the papillas are. Because papillas are very important, they must remain supported by interproximal bone. And this is very important because with these one piece implants, titanium is continuous, there's no connection. <coughs> and so you are not gaps which produce bone loss. You can see from the x-ray here, bone remains, but you can see better here. A blade, soft tissue response, a blade or another implant, this is continuous, it is one piece implant, so this bone remains. There's no gap. Problems of the gap, no gap is the best solution. Another case, abutment inside the slot, soft tissue response. After eight years, you see, bone is there, where it goes, no bone loss. 
1993 I've been using this external connection radius. <coughs> In a case of, of agenesia, 1993, this was the ground. This was an article I did 15 years ago about this case. This is after 12 years, 14 years, 18 years, 20 years. Another case, same connection. This is a famous case, I'll tell you why now. Because I've been cutting the blade this part. And look at the response of the bone around the neck. This is the top. Famous in the sense that the FDA has been harvesting this case from an article from us to reclassify the blades. This is the only clinical image, clinical or exhibit image present in this panel with whom blades have been reclassified, harvested from this article published on the Annals of Forum of Surgery. <clears throat> we can put multiple blades. For example, this ridge is thin, so I use three blades. I weld them together to load them immediately, safer. And then, final prosthesis. <coughs> And situation after four years. Five blades immediately loaded. Okay. About posterior blades, these are some shapes today on the market. You can deal with ridges like this. Look at how it is thin, this ridge, because the video widens a little bit, but you can see it. And with the instruments, we see that it is shaped like this, with an S. This you see during surgery, or with a CT before. So following Lincoln guidelines, we can bend the body of the blade to follow this anatomy. And the situation is like this. this is, there is a, a friend of ours, Manenti, who is the, most, the, the biggest expert of blade implants bicortical on the myeloid line. This is bicortical, we must look for. If we have a shape like this, which fits to this type of bicortical. So when you see the X ray, it looks like there is deeper, there is space there, but it's not true because. I saw by my intervention inserting the instrument, and this is my cortical here. It stops when you insert it. Thinner, you can see <coughs> this ridge incision in the middle of the other end, keratinized gingiva, so as to have a situation like this and to have a correct situation for correct seal around the eye. So now I will speak about two uh, a little bit specialistic technique for hypotrophic posterior inferior uh, sector, inferior bandage. This is endosseous distal extension. This is a technique to insert a, a ramus blade uh, entering from anterior and inserting the blade toward posterior so as to insert this posterior part of the blade under attached tissues. This is the concept I've been introducing in 1993. Situation to which this technique fits. Clinical case, you see this ridge, the holes that link out each as to perform on the cortical, superficial cortical, inclination of the blade, insertion of the blade, the blade is here. Screw here and work. 
just a little animation to let you understand how it fits. I'm sorry for the shoulders, but I must put them there. Oh, I stay here. Okay, implant enters from anterior and goes towards posterior. And you build the prosthesis. This part of the posterior tissues, posterior to the abdomen, are completely untouched. Hard tissues and soft tissues. This is a very beautiful X-ray. Ramos implants were invented not by Lena Linker, but by Ralph Roberts, one year after Linkau presented the plates. I've been just modifying the edges to make it fit to my technique. You see a very short slot. You insert the blade like this. The blade like, goes like this, and this is soft tissue around the button. Case like this, in which there are two irrecoverable teeth. But the problem here is that the superior prosthesis, if we take away this teeth, goes in unbalance because this is non-prosthesis, free. So I must load these teeth immediately, this implant that we put here, in the interest of the superior. So I decide to remove the teeth, to insert one blade in the way you saw posteriorly, a screw anteriorly, bending it, immediate welding of the bar, immediate loading. And this is three months later, soft tissues. How soft tissues are? Definitive fixed prosthesis. Eight years later, you can see how the bone has been, thank you, has been regenerating around. The bone has been responding to the load. What should I do? Just telling me that the battery is okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm out. Okay. Oh, it's a battery. It's a battery is low. Situation immediately after intervention was like this. You see this crater. <coughs> Somebody says we have not to deal with periodontal situations. Okay. Case with two blades, welded, soft tissue outcome, final prosthesis, and this is X ray at the end of work. This is we have been publishing on the Internet Tribune as well. This case. And this is after four years. Look at the level, horizontal level of bone around these ends. Piazzo surgery perfectly fits to this technique, although I've been working for 20 years without piezo surgery. Of course, well goes on. And uh, it's very useful this tip because we can insert in the bone and we can go inside and follow this path with a the blade. Then we can put a screw in the front and weld and immediately load this type of situation as you saw before. Case like this. This is interesting because hey, we can undo screws here. If you put screws, you arrive in here. Fifth, here what you do. But I want an abutment here because tomorrow I will work on this part. We have to look forward for our patients. Patient. So I, my program is to remove the, this tooth. And I have to deal also with this part, which the ridge looks very thin. So, extraction of the posterior tooth. He has a surgery, inserting the blade. You see, blade is here, this is situation. 
then you make the holes here, link out this to do, he has a surgery, uh, holes drives you better, drive you better, it's easier with holes connecting yours, it's better to not to lose the simple steps that you have to teach us to Lay there, then a screw, welding together, immediately loading, and this is the case finished. And we have four teeth. If we remain like this, we finish here. Another case, you see how the implant is between the superficial cortex and the uh, cortex of the alveolar canal. This is the case, on the other side the same. Here I mean decided to, to, removing, to remove the bar and finish the case like this. <coughs> this is after five years. To show this before this case. <coughs> Another case, combination of the techniques you saw in the superior being inserting implants here and removing these teeth. And this is nine years in the superior, here I've been losing one year. Before arriving to the definitive prosthesis. Problem zero. Inferior is this one. So to close with the techniques with the with the blades, I show this case. 2001 situation is like this, but as you will see. These implants will be, will be lost. They, they were, 2001, they, were, they had problems, yes. And these implants too. Situation in 2016, six months ago, was like this. These implants lost, and this implants. So what I say, I decided to cut the bridge so as to let the patient stay with the bridge, to insert a blade here, See the screws how they were. And to do this today, we use assisted hammers as well. They work very well. This pushes very well the implants inside. This is one implant. On the other side, we do the same. And then, after three months, patient comes and we disassemble the bridge. We insert a new implant, needle implant here. Remove an implant here. Weld together all these implants. This is the situation after this intervention. And she goes on like this. So this is those before and this after. This is the final prosthesis, 14 elements. And she goes. Last the cell, after the blades, I want to speak about the needle implants, because nobody speaks about the needle implants. It's a taboo, taboo to speak about the needle implants. And in particular situations, they are still important. And maybe they are for the future in some particular situations. Now that everybody understands what bioarticalism is, Shalom invented these implants, but as you can see, the problem was to connect them together. They were Tantalo implants. Shalom is a French colleague. Mondani was a disciple of Shalom, and he thought, how, he thought, how can I connect firmly these implants? So he's been using the titanium needle implants and inventing the intraoral welding machine that you saw this morning to connect these implants and load them immediately. This is 1972. This is in the books, documented. <coughs> These are titanium needles. 
Maybe this guy, Paulinski, is the one who converted uh, Shalom, Tantalon, and uh, Incas into identity. When you deal with situations like these, I'm asking you what you do. D3, D4, go. We see the where the nerve is, maybe. Augmentation. Lot of risk of failure. What can you insert? Bone is like this, and this is a good solution for me. You have to be able to do that. Nobody was born, no one to do it. And with this technique, we have very good success rates. Both this technique and the, the previous one, we are speaking about the three, the four osteoporotic ridges. Understand? Ridges in the posterior mandible that nobody is able to do anything. They don't take like that. <coughs> technique is very simple and you deal with ridges like this. Big hypothesis. Histology around middle implants. Biomechanical studies. This is Polytechnic of Torino, this is an important uh, institution. Lorenzo did the study. Important. Articles we've been writing in the States too. And situations like this. You insert these implants and you see how they draw the anatomy. They reach the cortical bone deep inside. This is the situation, this is prosthesis. And four years later, four years later, bone is still there. And we have provided a fixed prosthesis which is capable to restore relationship between the jokes. This is very strong structure. Do you know Ducati? Who is Ducati? Motorbike? Similar. But the question is always how can we manage prosthesis with this? Oh, prosthesis, then. With the needles, how do we And we have a response to that. This technique. <coughs> For example, patient has this area on the right. You can see the ridge is completely empty, so I decided to have the needles. I do it since 20 years, 96, January I began. After friends, colleagues told me, try this because it's good. And no, the nerve. There is a technique, of course, beach. So, this is the day of intervention. We have this little other and gingiva that we must respect because we, when we insert the needles, they must be divergent. We cannot enter here, enter here. We must cut in the middle of this gingiva. And we can insert these thin cylinders of tape. But they are towards the tongue. So we correct the position because they must be perfectly in the center of the ridge. This is very important. And so we weld a bar. Welding machine is necessary to perform techniques like this. And this is after one month. These are in the camps around these. I want to see, to see this thing, because this is really important. Suggest temple of Sisi. Same concept. How do we perform prosthesis? We follow the Schillingburg principles. Fix prosthesis. He's been teaching to build prosthesis, easy to wash, more than 3 millimeters under 
the framework. So food passes here and then it goes around. We are speaking about atrophy, hypotrophy cases. Atrophy is few bone. So there is a very big distance between the inferior and the superior. So we design a prosthesis like this. This is the provisional one. This is the, the proof of the zirconium being modified because I, want, I wasn't happy. This is the definitive prosthesis. I tell the technician, stop here, you must stop here. This is the moment of cementing and this is the situation. An incredible, eh? what you see in 2016. This is the future. This is what you see from above. Patient, this patient, first I've been inserting a provisional prosthesis arriving in the gaps. And she said, no, I don't feel well. Then I've been inserting this one. And she said, I feel very well. This is fantastic. Palaces of the town I live are built in the same way. Thanks. Capes of <coughs> To show you the hygienic outcome, I showed you a case that did in 2003. This one, eight needles, four screws, 81 years old. It's a conservative. And this is one year after without cleaning anything. She comes, take a picture. She could the clean better than here, but here there is not. Look at the bridges you did years before. For example, like in this case, this is from above, and this is 11 years after. I saw her two days ago. She has many prosthesis on implants, it's called this is perfect. Okay, if you want to believe, this is. We've been publishing the numbers of the technique in, uh, when we published this article some years ago, they were 350, we lost them. And we added the 99% of 5 years, 95.8 at 10 years. These are all the cases since 1996. And as you can see, if you want to go and see these studies, Statistical study and also symptoms. You put my name, okay, you find it easily on the internet, and you can see how these implants, these implants in the posterior mandible, are very good success rates. And there are little differences, not so much between different techniques. Sometimes because you are using a technique in particular difficult situation, there is a little situation worse than the other. So now we have finished the dinner and this is the worst situation that we were to face. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>